Welcome to The Fallen State. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Thank you so much for being with me. I absolutely appreciate it. Today, more young people in our country are becoming atheists. I want to know why. I have with me Jacqueline Glenn. She is a major voice for atheism on YouTube. Her channel is extremely popular. Even Richard Dawkins is a fan. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. You don't look like an atheist. How did that happen to you? Um, <laughs> how does one look like an atheist? Oh, kind of like Satan. <laughs> no, no, no atheist, <laughs> uh, I don't believe in Satan either. Oh, no, no. I mean, yeah, I, I get it though. That's a, that's a common yeah. thought process. So define atheism for me. Uh, a person that does not believe in God. Do they believe in Satan? No. The devil? So they don't believe in heaven or hell? No. Oh, okay. And so were you always an atheist? No, actually I grew up uh, Catholic. I was raised Catholic from kindergarten through my senior year in high school. And then after that, I graduated and had personal issues, I guess you could say, with the Catholic Church. So I went more into being a Protestant and then as far as evangelical and then started questioning things and from there ended up slowly as an atheist. And so are you able to tell us what was wrong, what type of personal issues you had with the Catholic Church? Oh, their politics. Um, uh, a lot of their cover-ups of misconduct within the church. You mean the homosexual men raping the boys? Uh, molestation, yes. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And so at 18, that turned you off because you found out that this was happening that, and the church was covering it up? That was a large part of it. Uh, another thing that really affected me personally was one of my best friends growing up was gay. And he was in school with me and constantly felt this threat uh, of losing scholarships to college or even admission to college because our school, you know, had it set up such that anyone who was gay could potentially be expelled and obviously that's going to look bad on a, on a transcript to an Ivy League college, which is what he was trying to go for. Um, and just to see the, the pressure that that put on him and the judgment that he faced and the, the fear he lived in every day, it just really kind of got to me. So that was another thing that, that really kind of hurt and I found that other denominations were more accepting. So that's kind of what got me to leave the structure of a Catholic church. And also I was looking for some kind of feeling or connection to God. And I never really felt it, but I wanted to badly. Right. I understand that. Why do gay people feel fear when no one really cares about them being gay? They should just be gay and not be concerned if someone find out or not. For him particularly, there would have been consequences. But he, he didn't have to feel fear because no one can tell unless he told them, right? Right, but you know, he had to change the way he behaved. He had to uh, try to act more masculine. He couldn't be himself. Oh, he was acting like a, would normally be acting like a woman? Well, he was, he had more feminine characteristics. So he wanted to act like a woman his, at school. No, 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 He didn't want to act like a woman. He just wanted to, to be attracted to men and not have to worry that he was going to lose his future for it. And also, it's hard to have something that, that is that critical to who you are be something that you have to hide every day. You know, you shouldn't feel like you can't tell your friends, you know, because even me, he wouldn't tell me, and I, I knew him since we were like eight. But that's not abnormal not to tell your friends. Most people don't go around telling their friends, I'm a sinner. Okay, but that's... Is uh, that true? But, uh, you know, I don't view it as a sin. Oh, you don't? No. Um, I don't really believe in, in that concept of sin anyway. Did you view but, it as a sin when you were a Catholic? Well, I mean, I understood what it meant, but now I kind of reject that. But at the time you did see it as a sin. No, and that's another thing. I kind of cherry picked what oh, I wanted. I, oh. And like, that was one thing that I just, you know, I was like, you know what, God's cool. He wouldn't, you know, he wouldn't do that. He wouldn't judge somebody for that. Um, so I kind of just mentally blocked that out and then that's another, <laughs> it's one of the reasons why I ended up losing my faith because I had to come to terms with that and the fact that I was cherry picking and I didn't want to admit it to myself but when I finally did and actually looked at everything I just couldn't be honest with myself and continue wow. down that path. And so you left that church and you went to a Protestant church you say? I, I delved into different Protestant churches. My, my dad's side of the family is, is more Protestant leaning, so it was kind of an easy transition for me, which, you know, it, it was an insult to my very Roman Catholic <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> maternal side of the family. Yes. Um, but it was something that I, I tried. And did you feel closer to God once you became a Protestant? Uh, I felt, I felt better 
with those environments than Catholic churches, right. but uh, I still didn't feel like a thing. And so did you go to another religion or church after you left there? When I got engaged, um, my, my fiance's family influenced me a lot and they were very evangelical. Uh -huh. So for a while, a very brief while, I kind of adopted that mentality where I was just um, almost evangelizing to friends because I was afraid they were all going to go to hell. Uh, it was actually kind of bad. I was I, I said some hurtful things to people that I regret and have later apologized for. Um, but I briefly went into that and then after that I kind of did the agnostic thing for a while. When you say I wanted to feel close to God, what were you looking for? Um, I, I guess I just really wanted to believe it. I just wanted to feel like I wasn't tricking myself. Oh, I see. You know, which is kind of what I had been doing for a while. And it just, it seemed such, like such a nice idea. I get it. There is a, a comfort that comes from feeling like there's somebody watching you, taking care of you, looking after you, that there is some afterlife that you can look forward to and see your loved ones that you care about that have passed. That's very comforting. And that's the thing I didn't want to let go of. Did you know that there is no feeling to God? When you come to God, the, the thing that's missing in you is, is uh, the conflict that you have the worry, the fears, the doubt, the insecurity, the feeling of uh, lack of love, all those things go away and there's no feeling. Okay, I think what I was searching people, for more well, most than- people are looking than, for a feeling. Yeah, a feeling, but, but uh, more of a, <laughs> a belief. I, I wanted to feel like it was real. Right. And that's something that I just never could bring myself to fully accept, even though for a long time I I did it anyway, hoping that if I, if I go with it long enough, then eventually it will become me, but it just, it so didn't. So you could never believe in God? Not fully. There was always something in me that felt like I was kind of just going through the motions. But now you believe there is no God? I don't believe in God. And so why is it easier to not believe in Him than it is to believe in Him? I feel like for me, one of the major things that helped me with that was education. Like I, I, I graduated with a degree in biomedical sciences and then I went to medical school for three years. One of the biggest things that I learned from it was how to critically think and analyze data and value evidence. And it's something that I, I feel like is necessary for me to accept anything. And, and at this point I had already kind of said that I was agnostic because there were so many things that just didn't personally feel right for me with the specifics of religion, belief aside. But then whenever I, I went to school for so long and had to rely on these processes of thought to help save lives and I realized the importance of it, that is kind of one thing that just, it stuck with me. It's a, a way of training your brain to process information. Yeah. And if you don't have the information to process, what reason do you have to believe, believe in it? It's fair then to say that education help to convince you to believe that, to not, not to believe in God? Education altered my way of thinking in a more critical sense. So I used those skills and applied that in other areas of life, but it's not like any class told me not to believe in God. And so do you believe that you are a critical thinker now? Yes. You are? You do yeah, believe that? Yeah, but I don't feel that that's a unique thing to non-religious people. Just so that you're, I mean, like a right. lot of people think like, oh, I, I talk about critical thinking all the time. That's not to say that religious people don't have that as well. Are you close to your earthly father? Yes. You are close. And, and were you close to him while growing up? I've always had a great relationship with my parents. Was he, and he believed in God? But both my parents are religious. And are they an example of people who believe in God? Are they a living example or just a wordy example? By your definition, you would say yes. They, they are really great people. My mom cares for both of her elderly parents. My but dad what? actually sings Christian music. Like they're, <laughs> they're amazing people. But what's the real deal? Because you're right, they can show me one thing, but being their child, you're behind closed doors with them, you see Well, I mean, no thing. one's perfect, and I don't expect perfection from anyone. You don't? No, Why of course not? not. Because that's, uh, that's unreasonable. Why you is that? You know, because, well, the thing is, is I put no one on a pedestal. You know, uh, if, if someone makes a mistake, it's much easier for me to forgive them and look past it. But they don't have to put a pedestal to expect perfection from them. Well, you can hope for perfection, but to expect it is something totally different. Am I hearing you say that behind closed doors, your parents were not a living example of people who believed in God? 
I think they were better than most people who claim to believe in God. But were they a living example? I'm not sure what you're trying you, to say. Uh, I'm, I'm asking. They were great. I mean, my mom didn't have money growing up, and she still found a way to sacrifice enough to send me to a religious school, which right. was expensive and something that she really couldn't afford, but she did it anyways because she cared. You know. But were the uh, parents of patience and understanding when dealing with you and with each other, uh, did they fight? I mean, occasionally, but not really. I mean, I it didn't really see much of it. Were your mother, your father, the head of your, your mother? Um, I mean, I suppose in different aspects. Was he? And uh, depending on what area you're talking about. Were there areas where he was and other areas where he was not? My mom was more present because my dad is a musician and travels. Oh, okay. But, I mean, they're, they're both great people. I mean, I, I am very happy with were there the way they that raised you did me. not like about them growing up? Um, I mean, it, there, there are certain things, but like I said, I don't expect perfection from it. And the thing but is, you is did as a whenever... Child. You might not now yeah. because you're older and you understand, but as a child you expected that, expected that from your parents, right? Well, kids don't, I mean, I didn't really, the thing is, is when I was young, I didn't realize when things were bad. It's only whenever you're older and you look back and you realize certain issues and can look at it with a mature perspective. So when your mother would get on your nerves as a kid, you didn't think that was bad? What do you mean? When she would irritate you, cause oh, you to make me clean angry. my room? When she would <laughs> cause you to come, become angry, did you think that was good or bad at the time? When I was a kid, I didn't want to clean my room. Did you think it was bad? No. I mean, I don't really see it as, as good or bad. It's just, you know, a kid doesn't want to clean their room or go to bed. I wanted more candy than I was given. <laughs> like, normal. So you, your father was a traveling guy because he was into music. Mm -hmm. uh, did that allow you to grow up close to him or there was a little separation there? It was a little bit of separation. But, right. I, but I feel like uh, whenever I got older, I, I feel like I'm very close with him now. And especially. what brought you closer to him now? It, there was a point when I was in high school where we had a very honest conversation with each other and he treated me like an adult and opened up to me in ways that he hadn't before and it felt really great and then from there on we, we established a very solid relationship. Uh, do you believe that we are born in a fallen state? Uh, no. You don't believe that? No, I mean I, I don't, like I said, I don't believe anyone's perfect but to say that you're born into a fallen state is to say that there was a state at which you could have been that you fell from. And I don't, I don't really think that way. I feel like there is just the state you're born into. And are you happy with the state that you're in now? I am happy with, with the decisions and the way that I live my life, yeah. You have perfect peace? I feel very peaceful. How about perfect peace? I'm not sure what that means. You don't know what that is? I mean, I, there are things in this world that, that uh, make me very uneasy. So whenever I think about you know, different issues around the world, it, it makes me you know, not feel that peaceful. But within myself and, and the, the life that I live, I'm, I'm happy with it. So when, during those times when you have conflict within, what causes you to have conflict? The most internal conflict I face is based on like personal relationships that I have, mostly in dating. <laughs> it's difficult. Um, I tend to focus on the good parts of people maybe a little bit more than I should, right. which makes me more trusting than maybe I should be, because I'm like, yeah, they have this track record, or yeah, they've done these bad things, but they have these great qualities. And then I somehow think that the other stuff isn't going to affect me, and then it does, and I'm you know, having to deal with those things in my life. Do you believe in absolutes? Moral absolutes? Period. It depends on what you're, what do you mean? More, do you believe in moral absolutes? Mm, like objective morality? Right. No. Why not? Uh, well, I mean, I think you can, I, I just, I feel like most people's moral compass is shaped by the society they live in, the people that they're surrounded with. Uh, what is the norm? What's expected of them? And I feel like this can change drastically depending on where you grew up, um, what time period you live in. Uh, and I feel like to say that these types of choices aren't subjective is wrong because if there were some kind of objective morality, some like clear line between right and wrong that everyone just knew, then there wouldn't be so much debate. Even within Christianity, there are a lot of Christians that can't 
collectively agree on issues like gay rights, abortion, divorce. I feel like that kind of disproves it. Most people know right from wrong, uh, but in their fallen state, they have decided to accept wrong and not deal with what's right because it would require them admitting to themselves that they are wrong. And the ego doesn't want you to admit that you're wrong, so they chosen to go that route no, I of, of pretense. No, I disagree. So do you know right from wrong? I feel like I conduct myself in the most ethical way possible, and I weigh the pros and cons of every choice that I make, and I try to choose the ones that benefit society as a whole and, and cause the least amount of suffering. Is that based on knowing right from wrong? It's the based on, uh, no, it's, it's based off of my ethics. Do you know right from wrong? I don't believe that there is a standard definition of right from wrong. I understand what you're trying to say. Okay. But I feel like, again, that implies a sense of objectivity that I don't think is right. I feel like it's a very subjective thing. My right from wrong is very different than the right from wrong of people in Iraq. Is it wrong to hate your fellow man? I don't feel that that is good for other people or yourself. Is it wrong? For me personally, yes. Is it wrong, period? I don't believe that there is a period objective wrong for everyone as a whole. For the, the radical homosexuals who hate the Christians? Radical homosexuals? Are they wrong? <laughs> I've never heard that term. <laughs> I have never, and you know what? I don't really know of homosexuals that hate Christians, and mostly it's the other oh, way around. Are you kidding? I, no. It's, you're not being honest with me right now. No, have I've never met a gay those, person that hates Christians. Have you heard of those radical homosexuals who have gone out there to Christian bakers and they take them to court, they sue them? Have you heard of those things? I have. Is that right for them to do that? I to think the this, is a, this is a very, um, this is a difficult topic. Why is it um, difficult? Uh, it's mighty easy for me. Yeah, I know. This is, and this is, proves my point that there's not an objective morality. Is it right for those homosexuals, radical homosexuals, to do that to the Christians? I feel like if someone is going to discriminate against someone because they are gay, then that person doing that, um, I believe in free speech, so that person is open to all of the ridicule that they get. To, hold on a second, hold, I'm getting there. They, getting they should there. expect the ridicule that they're going to get and, in my opinion, deserve for discriminating against somebody like that. Do they deserve to be put out of business legally? Absolutely not. If they lose, if they suffer business because people are turned off by this company based off of those choices, that's their problem. But legally, I don't feel like the government should shut down a business based off of that type of thing, no. And so you're saying then that when the radical homosexuals went after those I don't Christians, like that term. I don't like that term radical. The thing is, is these people are people no, that have, have been putting up with a society of people discriminating against them because of who they are. They are tired of it. And unfortunately, sometimes it manifests in this way. And I, I don't think it's fair that the government would step in to do something about this, but if these people are receiving a backlash, it is one that has been long overdue. So is it wrong for the radical homosexuals to go after the Christians? Yes or no? To go after them in what sense? To force the them thing is, to bake a cake. I don't feel like, let me, let me no, 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 I don't question. feel like they should be forced to, force to do anything. them to bake a cake. No, 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 not forced. Okay. But if they receive ridicule as a result of not being open that. to this type of thing, then yes. So once the bakers said no, then the homosexuals took them to court to put them out of business. Was that wrong or is that wrong? The thing for is, the radicals to take the Christians to court. At that point, it's up to the court to decide. No, 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 no. Is it wrong for the radical homosexuals to take them to court once the Christians said no? No. If they want to take them to court, they are welcome to take them to court. Is it it's right free to do speech. That? It's free speech. What I don't think would be right would be for the court to then convict them and, and shut down their business. The Christians should take the, the radical homosexuals. You know, I think it's kind of amazing that you're focusing so much on the this type of thing. Why don't you take a second and, and, and put into perspective the amount of hate and laws that have been passed to take away rights from people who are gay. There, that, is, that is the bigger conversation here. Uh, what we're talking about here I'm not is the minority. Of any laws that really? Because gay marriage, gay marriage was just passed. But they have never been able to get married, so that wasn't taken away from them. It is a right that was not given there to was them. Never a law so do you that feel said, like that women before before women had the right to vote, they shouldn't have fought for that? But let me go back to the original question. So if the Christians took the radical homosexuals to court, 
Would that be right for the Christians to do it? Yeah, you can take anybody to court. Would it be right? Want. You can do whatever you want. No, I know we can do. I don't believe in an objective morality that says something is right or wrong. It's it's everybody's individual experience as a human being. If they feel slighted in some way, and they feel that that is the best way to essentially stand up for themselves, then do it. You will learn in the end that you can't win legal battles like that. Do you discriminate? I don't think so, no. You don't discriminate? I, uh, I make a conscious effort to not discriminate. Is it wrong to discriminate? In my opinion, yes. And do you discriminate? No. You never discriminate? I try my very best to not. Do you ever discriminate? I feel like to say no, I don't know if there has ever been a time in my life where I've discriminated. When different guys approach you, there's some that you like and some that you don't. You know, we have our taste in, in people, right? Do you say, yes, I'll go with you to the guy that you're not attractive to? Well, actually, <laughs> I have before. Have um, you ever but, turned down guys? Oh, of course. I'm always in a relationship, so but, that's easy. <laughs> but you did, so you're discriminating? Well, if I'm in a relationship, no. And no, no, that's, see, see, that's, that's, that is um, consciously twisting my words, which is frustrating. Um, <laughs> no, I'm not twisting your no, words. No, no, you are. You're I'm trying just to, telling you the facts. No, no, I mean, like, Making a decision, uh, personal preferences, taste. I mean, if I choose that's tonight, that's if I if I choose tonight to eat pizza instead of spaghetti, I don't feel that I'm discriminating against spaghetti. Like that's kind of ridiculous to equate discrimination against a group of people based off of race, religion, or gender as the same thing as picking a flavor of soda. Do you agree with the feminist movement of today? Um, man, that's hard. Uh, I agree with the standard definition of feminism, that men and women should be equal. Uh, but there are a lot of feminists today that I just cannot stand by because they, they almost thrive on their hatred towards the entire <laughs> gender of men. Yes. And that uh, is not something I feel comfortable aligning with. Can you give me an example of feminists who are doing that? Oh, yeah, or? yeah. There is this uh, idea of, of a rape culture that they keep I know. pushing. What all a lie, huh? The major issue I have with feminism is they take things that are, are real issues and exaggerate them to the point where it becomes almost like a boy who cried wolf scenario. Yeah. And then whenever there are real cases of these problems that need to be taken seriously, people don't. And I feel like they're doing more of a disservice to feminism as a whole than they are helping. Um, who you voted for this time around for President Trump or Hillary? Voting for Hillary. For Hillary, why not Trump? <laughs> Trump is insane. In what way? Uh, well, he just recently accused Hillary, uh, or he, uh, Hillary and Obama, as being part of ISIS. And he also suggested that people who uh, are Second Amendment people, his words, uh, take care of Hillary uh, so that she doesn't have her pick of the Supreme Court justices. And what do you think he meant? Uh, he, I, this he is said, being debated, but it's, it was pretty clear to me and most people that he was suggesting in a joking way, but still it's not funny to suggest shooting someone. He wasn't suggesting that at all. I'll agree to disagree. That no and there are other things. But he, you realize by voting for Hillary, you're discriminating against Trump, right? No, that is not. That is, is not. True. You cannot apply discrimination. You cannot equate discrimination against race, religion, people of, of different ethnicities. Who made that decision? You can't equate discrimination against groups of people to making choices and preferences in political parties, in the food that you eat, and what I decided to wear this morning. When Hillary Clinton was same. running for president, and it was apparent that Barack Obama was going to win, and they was encouraging her to get out, the Democrats were. And she said, no, uh, this is not over until June. Bobby Kennedy was assassinated in June. Was she implying that Obama might be assassinated? Uh, Trump specifically no, said No, answer that to about Hillary. Care. No. Was Hillary of implying that? Of course not. She that, supported Obama. Was Hillary? Uh, so why is it that Hillary can throw out the hint of assassination? She wasn't. Uh, she was talking about an Bar election. Why this I mentioned is Barack Obama's name at the same time, and you don't see that as a suggestion because she that, Barack, that she wanted Barack Obama. She wasn't. Are you an honest person? Yes. You would consider yourself honest? Yes. Are you being honest now? Yes. You are? Yes. Hillary is a liar. Oh, uh, well, is Trump is also a liar. I just prefer, I just prefer you the liar. Do she's a liar? I think, yes. I think that she is. She's a politician, unfortunately. Why would you vote for a person where you know in advance mm -hmm. that they're a liar? Because Trump is a liar, and I'd rather have the liar that doesn't want to play with nukes. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Do you support abortion? I am pro-choice. You're pro-choice, mm -hmm. and why is that? I believe in a woman's right to choose. To choose to kill a child inside the womb? I believe it's a fetus, and I believe it's her choice. I wouldn't 
personally do it, but Why I am not going to take that away from other Why people. Why would you do it? Because uh, I, I want kids. <laughs> One last question. How did you come up with your YouTube channel? Um, I, well, I, I used it as an outlet for expressing my opinions because I didn't really have anyone around me that shared them. Well, I've I watched several of your YouTube channels and they're very interesting. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I, and I encourage you to rethink voting for Hillary and stop yeah. discriminating against Trump. Oh, yeah. I, I wish you would stop discriminating against Hillary. No, I don't like Hillary. Oh, is that? You're discriminating she against She is man. the devil. I do discriminate. I discriminate all the time. And, I, and we all do, including you. Every human being on earth discriminates. Everyone. And they're lying if they tell you they don't. I think you, you need to take into consideration that people use discrimination as something more serious than just making a decision between options. Amazing. Discrimination is something that is like insulting. What someone thinks subjectively, their own opinion, their own discriminations that they may have, should not be something that is legally forced onto other people. We tell so that anytime, to a lot of anytime that happens, I have a problem. There's an adult mother who wants to marry her adult son. They say they love one another and the courts are trying to prevent them from marrying each other. Yeah, okay, I have a problem. Should they do that? I have a problem whenever incest and, oh, and pedophilia are- These is, people love each other, no, no. they're adults? Incest? Why shouldn't they? Incest is not as, it has, I mean, it's on the same level as two men and two women. No, it's actually not. You can't have a genetically mutated child by having sex with the same gender. And so you don't see them on the same level? Absolutely not. Of course not. Right. People having sex with family members, with minors, with animals is not on par. But at one with time we saw marriage. how gross homosexuality was. No, we I never thought that opinion. actually, ever. Yeah. Did you have fun? Doing what? This. Oh, <laughs> yes. It was yeah, fun. I, I enjoy a good conversation. Yeah, I can tell. I've had choices since the day that I was born.